Hey, if you're a small business owner, I want to know what is the biggest issue you're facing today? Employees, staff. And you know, I look internally at myself a lot and I say, am I doing something wrong? Am I mistreating people? Is, is my business just poorly ran? Like, what is it? And the truth is, I mean, maybe we could offer some more benefits. Like if we charge a little bit more, but, but man, like there's not a whole lot of room to charge a whole lot more. Um, I guess we do have plenty of work though. So all things equal, that's really the option we have is raise rates. Um, I just, I don't think that really solves the problem though. Um, I think that people today are just impatient and that, that translates into an impatient workforce. It translates into people who don't stick around anywhere long enough to actually learn how to do the job. And it's funny because I've seen people literally say that you can train somebody to do lawn care and landscaping in a couple minutes. Like, <laughs> okay, maybe you can get them on a mower and make them move it forward and backwards. But the damage that they're going to cause to to property, to uh, the equipment, um, just all of the above, to your name, to your reputation it's it's bad like and it, it's it's serious like it you can cost way more money than you can make especially in this low margin you know low dollar industry and if you're a new guy just starting out you're probably not charging for all the extra overhead and for all those unknown expenses that these employees are going to cost you someday um and don't get me wrong like it's a double-edged sword my employees are everything like they are the business like i'm an employee of gabris landscaping and like we are the business um and i don't forget that and i try to make sure that they're treated like people not like you know a position um but it doesn't matter it's it's hard work like physically and mentally taxing um the hours suck you're working up you're waking up at the beginning of the day you know you're working dang near all day um at least four days a week a lot of times five days a week because we're not fully staffed that we can give the guys time off on those fifth days um sometimes we have to because they're going to die if they don't because it's so dang hot and the work is so hard um but we do a lot of different stuff so it just kind of depends but it's like one of the hardest things is making sure we have the right qualified people in all the positions that we need um, even though we have generally enough staff, um, it's, it's just hard having the right staff. You can't just put people out there and make money. They've really got to know what they're doing. And that's the hardest part for me. So I've spent a lot of advertising dollars towards hiring. And that seems to make a big difference as far as getting the phone ringing again. But that doesn't change the fact that I will hire 15 guys and you know, not all at once, but over the course of three months and they will all, except for maybe three, two or three will be gone. And it's like, I don't know. Some of them have drug problems. Some of them have problems waking up in the morning. Some of them just can't handle the physical labor. Um, some of them can't handle the, the logical mental portion of the job, you know, just thinking for yourself and making a simple, basic decision, you know? Um, but you know, we are a lawn care landscape. People do judge us, even though I probably make more money than most of you guys listening to this. I know I'm judged because I'm a lawn guy. Um, but there is money in this industry. This is a big business. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big industry. And there are plenty of people who do really, really well. Um, irrigation, lawn treatments, both of those types of, of, of services make great money. But they also require a technical skill. And that's what I think I'm struggling with. There are nobody out there looking for a job with a technical skill. And if they are, it's because they really never learned that skill. And that's why their employer kind of let them go in the first place. So it's like they say they've got experience, but their experience isn't worth anything because they weren't paying attention while they were there learning. Um, and I get that problem at my office too, where guys have been around for so long and they still don't know what they're doing. And it's like, <sighs> I mean, what do you do? You know, like at some point you're beating a dead horse. And, um, so you bring in new horses and maybe the, maybe you get a good one. That's, that's not dead. I don't, I don't know. Um, uh, the employee problem's real. It really is. I have plenty of work. I think that I've never had a year where I've ran out of work like ever. I've thought like, Oh, I'm getting slow. I'm getting slow. 
I've never actually ran out of work. Like, and I've been in business 17 years. The issue is I run out of staff. I run out of equipment. I run out of weather. Um, there's material shortages, you know what I mean? Uh, which that wasn't really an issue until the last couple of years, but, uh, and it seems to be getting better now, but for a couple of years, their material shortages cost me a bunch of money. I mean, yeah, that's my, that's my thought is any established business. If you're a new business, you may be looking for some help with marketing. If you're an established business, you're looking for help with finding employees, retaining employees and training employees. Um, and again, that's one of my big reasons for making these videos. I want to use video content to improve my training programs. I have a lot of written documents uh, that I use to train my staff and it works, but I'm hoping the videos are going to speed up the process. The problem is nothing and absolutely nothing can replace on the job, hands on field experience especially in this industry where part of your job is just knowing the customer and knowing their yard and understanding what they want and doing it how they want it done a lot of times um, within the scope of doing it right. Uh, you know, I'm not going to have you go do something wrong just because a customer wants it done wrong. I mean, I guess I would if they're going to pay enough and everybody knows we're doing it wrong and like it's out there. But in general, we're going to do it right. But if a customer maybe wants, I don't know, this done or that done a little differently and it's not, you know, too egregious, we'll do it. You know, it's, it's about customer service and knowing that that customer wants it that way is part of providing a good service. And you can't teach somebody that in a video. I mean, we're going to make a video about every single client you have and do like a walkthrough of their yard. I mean, maybe, I guess if you had enough time on your hands, maybe someday we can get to that point, but you turn your customers over so often and they change their mind and say they want this and then they want that. And, um, keeping up with it would almost be impossible. So at some point you can't, you got to go out and make money. You can't sit around and micromanage everything. Um, so what do you do? You know, it's like, I'll tell you what I do. I hire for like a week or two and then I let go for a, a couple weeks and then I hire for a week or two and then I let it go for a couple weeks. And if I keep the staff, if the staff sticks around, if the staff's good and they're, they're working out, I stop hiring. But if I'm not staffed, I take a break every three or four weeks um, you know, or four, three or four weeks. And then I go and I try and attempt to hire for a week or two. That way, at least my hiring ads are staying fresh out there. Um, indeed has been my biggest, my biggest one lately. And I'm not a huge fan of indeed, uh, to be honest, but you got to go where the people are. They used to be on Facebook before that I could find people on like Craigslist. Uh, my gym was a good referral source for me for a while. I found some people in like a business networking group, but and before that, I found all my buddies from college would come with me and work. And that was a great referral source. And then come with some of the fraternities uh, were good referral sources. But I really need more grown men, um, people who have the availability full time to come work and learn a trade and really, you know, help us grow and build a business. And it just seems like there's not a whole lot of grown men out there who are ready to take on responsibility and commit and make a commitment. And honestly, I think that's what we're really seeing here is a lack of people in our society who are willing to make a commitment, honor that commitment and see it through at least long enough to know that they've given it a fair shake. Uh, everybody just, just sees hardship, quits, walks away. And it's sad because it, it, it's not going to, it's not going to turn out well for our country. Uh, fortunately, there's a lot of guys out here who are still out there getting it. I know, I know I'm not turning away from problems. Um, I hit them head on sometimes to my, to my detriment, but, uh, at least I'm not running away. You know what I mean? And it's like, I know there's a lot of guys out here who aren't either, but the staff tends to be doing that every time they hit a problem rather than face it or deal with it. They just want to quit and go find another job and everybody's hiring. So it's easy to go find another job. Um, so I don't, I don't know how we fix this problem, but I guess I can stop rambling about it and get my butt back to work. That's one way for me to fix my own personal issues. But for you guys, best of luck.